we have Elm code that compiles, but it doesn't actually do anything and therefore it doesn't actually produce a program. So we have to do the basics. And what the basics are, are two things. First, we have a main Elm file, that's great, but we also need to have a main method that initializes the three parts of the required architecture, and that's a view, something to display and draw in our application. Second, it has to have a model or data that you want to display in that view. And third, an update function that can handle the changes to the data over time. Let's go ahead and import browser. And instead of writing exposing, we'll just do just browser to import all of the things. We will create our main method. It has no parameters. And it is a browser.sandbox. And this is a basic, basic application. It takes one parameter, which is an object. And that object takes three properties. In Elm, they call this a record. I call it an object just because I'm from JavaScript. So an in init function, which says, I want the initial model. You tell me what the initial model is or all our data. It's normally an object with one property or a record with one property. You can put as many as you want. The second is a view. We have to have some kind of view function that draws what we see on the screen from that model. And finally, we have to have an update function. So anytime the model changes, the update function knows what to do. So if you increment things or add or change things, how does that change the model? What, what's the new value of the model? This is basically a reducer function if you are aware of list comprehensions and the reduce function, or fold as it's called in other languages. So we hit save, and immediately we have a problem is that init, view, and update aren't implemented. So let's go implement them. And it's pretty simple. It basically says, give me a record that has our initial data. So for now, we're gonna do a value equals zero because we're gonna use this add function to add data to it. So if we start at zero, we can keep adding numbers to it. The second is, now that that's good, we have to have a view. And the view is what we display. The cool thing is the view and update both get the model as the first parameter. So we'll say model is the first parameter. And we have to return a div tag. And if you look at the div tag here, this div function, it, the first parameter is a list of attributes. And the second parameter is a list of contents that go inside the div. If you look at this function, very similar to JSX and React, it's going to produce something that looks like either this or this. Just an empty div. Oh my gosh, I can't type. And so that's it. But because we didn't import it, it's from the HTML. So let's go ahead and import HTML and we'll expose div and text for now. So we can have text. So let's put some text in there. Yo. Yeah. Cool. Last thing we have to do is an update function. So let's go ahead and put the update function in there. It also gets the model as the first parameter. The model is interesting because we don't actually have any case statements. So for now, we'll just return the model treat it as an identity function, whatever you give me, I'll send it back because we're not providing any messages or ways to change this data. So now when we compile it, we go to source me now, cal.js, it compiled and now produced our Elm program all in JavaScript, compiled down, ready to go, fantastic. And that's your first Elm program that actually compiles. Just a simple sandbox method. The browser has many others that are more advanced, but this is a simple one. Just gotta have the initial value of whatever your model is. In our case, it's a record or an object with a value property equals zero a view that can take this object and kind of represent it on the screen. And then finally, an update method. When the data changes, what do I do with it? Right now, there are no changes, so it just sends it back. You have a model that can never change, and that's okay. You can still draw it to the screen.